Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel and happy April. Let's do some planning. So if you have been around the last couple of months, I have really struggled with actually getting my monthly planning done at the start of the month or even like finishing off the month prior. I have just struggled this year and I made it a goal of mine to not do that this time. And so sat down, it is April 1st today. I've just updated my calendar. I just updated my monthly vision board. I've got it right here already printed out and I am ready to quickly chat through that. So we're gonna do a little bit different today though. I'm not going to necessarily take you through every step of my vision board because I've been getting a lot of questions lately and just some confusion and even just some doubt as far as like, how do you complete all the things that are on that vision board and how do you decide what to put on your vision board and how do you know if you can actually realistically do that or not and so many things. So I want to talk a little bit more about that side of things so that I can truly help you with your planning for this month versus sharing all the plans that I have because in previous plan with me's I've shared with you my goals because I wanted to give you very tangible examples of exactly what it is that I put on my vision board to achieve in that month's time. But now I wanna take it into a kind of a different route and I wanna make sure that I'm really helping you implement and create those really tangible goals and, and habits and desires for what you wanna achieve in that month for yourself. The goals that are on my monthly vision board honestly are almost exactly the same as those that were in my March vision board. So if you wanna see that, go back. I will link that video in the description box below. You can go watch the March vision board plan with me and you can see those goals. So that's why I'm also not really gonna dive deep into this. I also did not go through and create a video where I talked about what I achieved and what I didn't achieve. I'm just not sure how much that is helpful. So let me know in the comments below if you actually enjoy me coming back to you at the end of the month and going step by step through every single goal or habit that I put on my on my vision board to decide if that actually was something that I achieved or not. Let me know if that's something that's helpful for you or if you just prefer the planning process and that side of things because I wanna make sure I'm creating videos that you actually wanna see and that you actually are gonna watch. So let me know in the comments below if you like seeing basically the recap of the month and what was accomplished and what wasn't or if you just prefer the plan with me. So that would be super helpful for me. So let's dive actually into how and why I put so many things on my vision board every single month and how some who have even commented in previous videos that they're like, there's no way you can get all of that done in a month, that's unrealistic, you know, that sort of a thing. And so let me explain in the event that you're also wondering like, wow, that seems like a lot of stuff. The majority of the things that I put on my monthly vision board are habits or weekly tasks that I want to do that are ultimately going to help me achieve the goals that I've put on my yearly vision board. So a prime example of this, and I know I've shared this in another video, weekly date nights is the exact same goal that I have on my yearly vision board. But ultimately that goal is I just wanna make sure that I am putting in intentional time for my marriage. I want to spend that time with my husband and I wanna be really, really purposeful in that. So by putting weekly date nights on there, that's super basic, super simple, super broad, honestly, it's not specific. That allows me to make sure that I'm putting that intention there, right? So that's a prime example, reading 10 pages a day. Again, that is just me wanting to read 10 pages of personal development every single day so that I'm continuing to grow my mind and my mindset. And it just helps me. It makes me a better human being, truly. So those sorts of things are more so habits. They're not necessarily goals. They are just like little habits that I can do daily or weekly that are ultimately going to help me become the woman that I want to be and that are reflective of what it is that I put on my yearly vision board. So I hope that that makes sense. Now, I do have a couple of actual goals on my vision board and those things are more sparse purposefully because they take a lot more intention and action and a lot more thought, whereas some of these other things have become habit at this point. Reading 10 pages a day is pretty much a habit for me at this point because it's just part of my daily routine. 
Whereas some of these other things, I have to really actively sit down and think through and work through them where they're not just as simple as just getting to sit down and read 10 pages. Like for that, all you have to do is find the time, right? Find the book. I have the books. I have a whole library of books just here in my office. So I've got that part covered. That's quite simple for me to achieve. But some of these other things like my YouTube channel, for example, is a actual goal that is on my vision board. And that is something that takes a lot more effort, a lot more intention, a lot more purposeful action. So that is something that's more so a goal that I have that's on my vision board. Okay, so I hope that that kind of makes sense. Now, I want to kind of clarify also, I've shared this in my goal setting series. If you haven't checked that out, I will link the playlist for that in the description box below. Make sure to check that out. But I am all about diversifying the types of habits and goals that I set and I put on my monthly vision board and my yearly vision board technically. So what I mean by that is I have some professional goals and habits that I'm working towards. I have some personal goals and habits that I'm working towards. And then I have some happy goals and habits that I'm working towards. I do that because I want to make sure that I'm living more of a balanced life. Like there's no true balance out of life. But for me, sitting down and reading 30 minutes of fiction while I eat lunch away from my desk, those things make me happy. And they end up actually in a way, a roundabout way, helping me in my professional life while I'm working in my business because it gives me a break away from my business. It kind of breaks up the monotony of sitting here at my desk working all day. So when I step away and I go read fiction for 30 minutes, which I love to do, and I eat lunch away from my desk, whether it be outside if it's nice or just at my dining room table, doing that and changing up that scenery is so nice and it makes me happy, number one. But number two, it also helps me in my business because it breaks up that monotony and just makes me come back to work feeling more happy in a better headspace when I sit back down to be really, really productive and accomplish more that's on my to-do list, right? So when it comes to setting those, I make sure to have a variety. If you're wondering the difference between what's a personal goal versus a happy goal. So for me, a personal goal, like with my own health and fitness journey, for example, I want to complete this new program that I'm going to be starting on Monday. And then I also put on here that I want to do outdoor walks. I want to do five outdoor walks per week. Now that it's starting to warm up, we're in April, it's starting to be nicer out. It's, you know, spring is upon us. I just finished 75 hard where I was outside in all kinds of weather. And since then, I've barely gotten outside since I've completed 75 hard. And I want to get back to getting outside and the getting in that fresh air. So that's a two part one, the completing this program and logging my daily nutrition. Those are personal goals that I have because they're a part of my personal health and fitness journey. But then doing the five outdoor walks per week, that just makes me happy. I know how great I feel when I am getting fresh air, when I am spending time outdoors. So that's kind of both there. Weekly date nights, that's a happy goal. That makes me happy and I wanna spend that time with my husband, so that's a happy goal for me. I've got weekly family dinners and then we have Easter coming up. Those are going to be happy, happy goals for me. Those are happy things that I'm going to be completing in an effort just to have a happier life and to spend that time with family. So just wanna explain though, when it comes to setting these goals, I want you to just realistically sit down and think about the time that you have in your day to give to something else. If you have a super, super busy work life, children, part-time job on top of a full-time job, like all of those things, you may not have much time to put towards a happy goal, for example. But maybe you have the opportunity to eat away from your desk and maybe you haven't taken advantage of that opportunity, but now you have the opportunity to do that. Now you're realizing that could be really good for me. Maybe you have a 30 minute lunch break that you usually just sit at your desk and either don't eat most days or skip right over or whatever. Start utilizing that. Start making yourself get away from your desk for 30 minutes. Maybe you just go for a walk. Maybe you still eat lunch at your desk, but you decide to start going for a walk because you too realize that getting outside fresh air makes you so much happier. So maybe that becomes one. Maybe you have one happy goal on your monthly vision board this month and that's what it is. It's okay if you just have one. 
you can always grow to more later, right? But start, start somewhere, start small and put one thing on there. When it comes to a personal goal, that could be anything. I gave you a health and fitness example, but you do not have to use a health and fitness example or a goal on your vision board. That may not be a priority to you right now. I encourage you to someday adopt one of those because I do think that your health and your happiness and your wellness are so important and so vital for your life and for the happiness within your life, but that doesn't have to be the thing that you start with. Be realistic. What could be a personal goal? Maybe yours is budgeting. Maybe yours is paying off debt. So maybe you're starting to really look at your finances and you're deciding, you know what, I'm going to start taking $10 from every paycheck and it's going to go into savings. It could be something so small and that might seem so silly, but that will add up over time. And starting small is better than not starting at all, right? So start with those little things, but I highly, highly encourage you whenever you are creating this, if you're ready to create a monthly vision board, which I have the template that you can use, I use canva.com, it's a free, you can sign up with a free account, you can utilize this template, I encourage you to start with one professional, one personal, and one happy goal, if nothing else. And maybe they aren't actual goals, maybe they are just really simple habits. When it comes to professional, we all have all kinds of different jobs, so that could be anything for you. You know your job, you know a simple goal that you could put on there. Again, start small. Maybe, maybe your professional goal to start with is just being on time to work. I know that might, again, sound really silly, but that alone, that could be a great, great goal to start with, and you can build on that in future months to come from there. But how wonderful would it feel at the end of April or whatever month you choose to get to the end of that month and be like, I was on time almost every single day to work this past month. And because of that, my productivity was better. I was less stressed out at work. I enjoyed the days at work more, right? So if you can make that your goal to be on time for work, imagine maybe the ripple effect that could put on the rest of your work day, the rest of your work week, the rest of your month. And then you get to the end of the month. How neat would it be to, to think, you were on time the majority of the time to work almost every single day over the course of that month. You put however many paychecks, let's say you get paid twice a month, you put $20 into savings and your happy goal, you got outside and you walked. How neat would it be to say you did those three things, even though they are so simple, they're still a huge deal and they could have such an incredible impact on your day-to-day -day life, but also your overall month, okay? So maybe you start there. I started much smaller. I have been doing a monthly vision board for eight months now. And when I first started, I only put a few on here. And then each month I decided what I could handle and if I could add a few more things on here. Some of these things I would do even if they weren't on here, right? I would probably read fiction regardless if it was on here, but because it's on here, it reminds me to do it. <laughs> like that's the whole point of a vision board. You can see it. I hang mine right here above my desk. I sit here at my desk every single day. So I can see that. I can reference that and I can look up there and I can think, I need to read fiction today. I forgot to read fiction yesterday. I need to make sure I do that today. I want to make sure I read, you know, read the fiction and eat lunch away from my desk. Whatever that might be, this is something that has been built up over time. And each month when I, when I sit down to make my monthly vision board, I evaluate the month prior and I decide, okay, was there something that was really unrealistic on here? Was there something that I'm just not doing, I'm not accomplishing, and maybe I just need to take it off altogether? Or did I crush that pretty easily? And maybe I could handle a little bit more of a challenge in this upcoming month. I get to be the person that makes that decision. I cannot tell you for sure what you need to add on, what you need to take away, you have to be the person that takes that ownership, takes that serious look into your vision board or into your goals and really thinks through what needs to stay, what needs to go, what should I add, and then feel really good about it before you print it out or before you put it on the backdrop of your desktop or whatever you do with it. I know different people do different things. Some people don't print, the, don't print them out. They put them on the background of their phone. That's great too. But before you finalize it, decide is this realistic and is this something that I'm excited to do? I look at my vision board when I get done and I print it out and I'm so excited for a new month to be ahead. I feel super excited that I've taken the time to plan things out, but I also feel excited that I'm like, I know I can accomplish these things and I'm ready to. I'm ready for this new month ahead of me. I'm ready to see what I can do and I'm ready to feel really good at the end of the month when I accomplish these things because I know I can do it. I know I can do it. 
because I realistically thought about every single thing that I put on here before I put it on there. And now I'm thinking through, okay, when does this get done? When am I gonna do these different things? You know, for example, Easter, I know that that's going to happen in a specific weekend and we already have plans to go see family and have those dinners and have those meals and see that family. I know when that's gonna happen. Whereas reading my 10 pages daily, I need to be more intentional of when am I gonna read those 10 pages each day. So I hope that is helpful. I hope as you are planning out your April, you are feeling really excited, really confident, really just having a good time putting these goals into place. And if you have any questions of all, at all, of course, let me know, drop them in the comments. If you liked this video and you liked the information that I just shared with you and those tips, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share this with somebody else who is planning their April or whatever month it might be, because this of course applies to all the months. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I am so thankful you're here. Cannot wait to keep putting out videos for you. And until next time, we'll see you later. Woo!